Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. I am going to talk to you today about blogging. I know it sounds super simple, but it's actually really effective in letting yourself be seen as the expert in personal brand photography. So I'm gonna jump through some ideas that you can take away to start blogging so that you can show up as the expert as a personal brand photographer in your particular area. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment to this channel. I'm going to be creating uh, content more regularly for you in the world of personal brand photography and how to really start um, building that side of your business. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and jump right through. I'm gonna work through the worksheet that is available at thebrandphotographermethod.com. I will link up into the show notes, the comments, I get confused because I also do a podcast and so, yeah. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna walk through three ideas for you to get you started and what you want to do is really just take these and run with it with some of your own ideas. So let's go ahead and walk through this. So blog post guide for brand photographers. What's gonna be included in this guide is why you should blog, some ideas, and then if you are interested in purchasing a few of my templates, there is a link to that as well in the guide. So real quick, why do we blog? Um, number one, it's just really good for SEO. Um, as you are starting your brand photography business, people are probably not going to find you on Google right away unless you already have a really strong presence on Google, but what a blog can do is really start boosting your rankings. So I started doing this basically a couple years ago. It is a longer term game and now I show up, or at least last time I checked, I show up number one under Boston Brand Photographer. I haven't checked recently, but um, the goal is to be able to show up on that first page. Um, blogging is not dead. Um, some people like to think that, you know, everything is now video content, which a lot of it is, but blogging is not dead. And it's a great way to, as I mentioned, show up in that SEO, but also show up as the expert. But what ended up happening when photographers, um, you know, years ago started using blogs as a way to, um, you know, build up their website and build up their portfolio, it became like a dumping ground for photos. Like you would scroll through and you'd see beautiful images, um, but really there wasn't a lot of value in those posts. It was just like a ton of images, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but you can do so much more and so much more um, value can be put into these posts to show up as the expert. So that's what we want to think about is how can we start to leverage our blog, not as a dumping ground for your photos, but as a way to educate, inform and inspire your clients to work with you. So let's go ahead and walk through that. Number one, super simple, is five of your favorite spots to shoot at in your city anywhere. So what this does is it really starts to show that you know where the good spots are to shoot. Many of your clients are not gonna wanna shoot in their office. They're gonna say, my space is horrible, it's not great, my home is not renovated, it's not a beautiful space, what do you have for me? So the best thing you can do early on is also scout locations but then also put out a blog with five of your favorite spots. But also what this does is it allows you to send quickly to potential clients, oh, I've got a blog post on that. You can check out some spaces. Um, you can talk about the very degrees of rental fees um, associated with the spaces, and you can use images from past clients that you've shot in those spaces or get portfolio builds in those spaces to help really support um, the the inspiration that you have for those spaces. So one of the things that I did early on was use my portfolio images and those locations and tied it together into some of my best spaces to shoot post. Um, all right, so that's blog post number one idea. Super simple, you just want to go ahead and title it like three of your favorite spots or three recommended shoot locations for your next personal branding shoot. Okay. All right, let's moving on. How to how props make a difference in your shoot. So, one of the things my clients always struggle with is what to bring to the shoot. Some brands are going to need a lot of props and some brands are not going to need a lot of props, but usually there's like the basics that they may need, especially if you work with like service based providers. They're going to need a laptop, they're going to need a notepad, notepad, they're going to need a pen, things like that. Some of the most common props and you can also just say instead of just like having the post be like what props to bring but how I have here how props make a difference in your shoe so sure like they need to bring these props they all know that but like how can it make a difference in your shoot so what I did is I highlighted a session instead of just like saying here is a session from so-and-so's session and here are the beautiful images oh they're such a great client blah 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 I actually leveraged the images instead in a way to provide value to show my audience how those props actually made their shoot 
more beautiful or more interesting or more on brand. So that's one thing you can do. Um, it also will help tell them the importance of these things. Um, and then yeah, educate them on how it can make their shoot look more beautiful or more on brand. All right, so moving on. So we are going to then talk about case studies. So this is something that I learned about uh, from one of my business coaches. Um, she was actually a portfolio build business coach. We exchanged a coaching session for a photography session and she said that I should do think about doing case studies. And case studies is something that you can do to show how effective your process is in getting an end result. So for example, you might highlight how your client reached out, how you plan their session, how the images from those session look on their website. You can use screenshots to show how things evolved. What you ultimately want to do is show how the transformation was made to their brand. How did it help them achieve their end goal and their end result? So as I mentioned, you might need some screenshots, you might need to show maybe you show a little snippet of your questionnaire, how you got them to that transformation. And then what you would do instead of highlighting a particular, um, uh, you know, all of the images from that particular session, you're going to pull out images from that session. So again, instead of just like using it as a dumping ground saying, oh, I had a great shoot with so-and-so at this location, at this venue, and da 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 you're educating them on how you actually got them an end result. So that's really it. Those are the three case studies. If you are interested in grabbing my template, those are linked up. I'll link it in the comments. I will link this worksheet as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next episode.